All right, today we're gonna do a quick build of the sink. We're just gonna do a look tough here. Uh, so we've got plate, PCB, stabilizers, rotary encoder. Um, this particular build, we're gonna build the rotary encoder in this slot right there. Pile of switches, uh, tweezers, key puller, just in case we need to pull a switch out. So just for reference, this is the layout we're gonna roll with on the left-hand side here. So basically 2.25 space in the lower right corner here. And then a uh, shift key right there as well. So first thing we're gonna do, uh, we'll inspect the plate, make sure there's no weird scratches or anything like that. If there's any weird scratches, just let me know. I'll give you a replacement. Okay, we're gonna install the stabilizers. So for the stabilizers, um, and for each half, anything that's not the bottom row, you'll see the wire is gonna go on the bottom. Whereas for anything on the bottom row, the wire is gonna be in the top side, or what we call the north side. So I'm just gonna, I've already lubed and clipped these stabilizers, so I'm just gonna pop them in here. Now if you're using screw and stabilizers, uh, make sure you use washers for uh, these two slots right here as uh, if you don't the screws will interfere with the um, LED pads and you can cause some shorting issues so make sure you're careful with that and if you don't have washers you can just stick like a piece of paper in there and they'll suffice as a washer or protective thing so I've got the stabilizers in there now I'm gonna put the plane on top here make sure that's aligned correctly First thing I'm gonna do is um, kind of put some switches in the corners and some of the main spots here that I wanna make sure I've got the layout correct for. So pop one in the middle here, line that onto the plate. I'm gonna work the corners. Okay, let's situate this into the PCB. Yeah, this leg is a little bit bent here, so just be careful with bent legs on your switches. Now on this bottom row here, you'll see that it might be a little bit tough to see on camera here, but I've got markings for 2.25U, 1.25U, just other sizes here. Um, and what we we'll want to do is we'll match that up with the layout. So this particular build, we're doing a 225 here. And then all the mods, we're doing 1.25. So 1.25 here, 1.25 on this slot here. over here and lastly 1.25 in this left slot here here we go so I've got enough switches in here to start I'll flip this board back over fire up my soldering iron here and I'm just gonna wait for it to warm up tint the tip a little bit clean it off and let's go do these corner switches. Usually while I'm soldering, uh, after I do about a row of switches, I'll swipe my tip on a, there's a brass thing here. Can't really see it, it's off camera, but uh, I usually use one of those brass wool, not really brass wool things, but brass ball kind of thingies uh, instead of a wet sponge. So we got all these switches in here, soldered in. Uh, just gonna insert the rest of the switches. Uh, 
and then here for the caps lock space, make sure you're using the correct stepped caps lock or normal caps lock slot for your switch there. This one is using normal caps lock, so that's where I'm in the right position here. And make sure to, as you're turning the switches in, the legs of the switches are straightened out. But they're not. Sometimes you realize when you flip the board over and start soldering them in, uh, they'll get bent. So that's what switch puller or tweezers will be handy for. Uh, I'll switch puller to pull the switch out and then tweezers just to straighten out the pins of the switch again. switches here. I'm using Kazoo Boba U4s right here. Nice silent tactile. Um, they're pretty tactile too and the fact that they're nice and quiet I like that. Pretty good alternative to Zilios or Xylens if you used those before. So I use them in just about any new build I do these days. Alright so we got the, all these snapped in. And let's just get these soldered up. Now normally I have a uh, fume extractor, what I call my DIY fume extractor. It's really just a 140 millimeter fan used for a computer, uh, just attached to a 12 volt source. I'd normally turn it on, but it's pretty loud and may get hard to hear things around here. All right, so here, uh, I bet the switch pin right here. I'm just gonna remove that real quick. Happens a few times while I'm doing a board up. So we'll just bend that back out. Reinsert it, continue on. Just about after every row, I'll take a quick swipe on to clean off the tip here. off that row, another swipe. Now you may notice here, I'm going fairly quickly here. Um, you don't have to go as fast as I'm going. I've got a pretty decent iron here that where the tip warms up pretty quickly so I can kind of hit this really quick without having to wait too long. But it's okay to take your time on this. There's no hurry, just relax. Make sure everything gets soldered up correctly.
go. All the switches in there. Now we're gonna do the rotary encoder. So make sure two pins on here are at the top, three pins are on the bottom. Insert it through here. Now what I'm gonna do is hit this top left corner here and then hit the bottom right corner there. I'm gonna make sure those align. So I'm gonna heat that up. Okay, and I'm gonna push up on this encoder to make sure it's aligned correctly. Do the same with this bottom one right here, bottom pin right there. Push in while heating up, make sure it's all straightened out. Looks good. And once that's done, just hit the rest of the pins. So there we go. That takes care of the soldering part of this. Uh, next video, I'll cover screwing this all together with the screws and standoffs.